I'm sitting on the side of a sunlit hill somewhere in Worcestershire, soaking up the ambience. Sometimes scenery seems silent, tranquil, peaceful, but listen closely and the stories tell themselves. Birdsong, rising and falling in hedgerows laden with budding blackberries where thrushes and blackbirds trill like the finest musicians, while pigeons coo softly, signalling summer. Time is measured in church bell chimes here, as the 318 skirts the south edge of the village in a hiss of breaks, a relaxing exhale on entering paradise. There are bees buzzing in the clover here, transforming mellow melodies to sweet, sticky honey, the taste of sunshine spread on hot buttered toast. On the footpath, two dogs greet each other like old friends, barking pleasantries as their owners do the same. Even the sheep seem chilled here, bleating contentedly as they chomp on lush meadow grass. If you listen... You can hear horses' hooves clip-clopping on the tarmac, the gasps of over-enthusiastic runners, motorbikes whizzing down the Belbraton Road. Soon you'll hear a cacophony of cyclists peddling hard, chatting breathlessly, heading for the hills. At noon, a cockerel crows a welcome, complemented by the cosy buzz of mower motors, keeping lawns shorn and neat as new haircuts. Children's laughter carries on the breeze as barbecues sizzle and conversations crackle with kindness. Then it's leather on willow as teams take the green, batting and bowling to polite applause. Music drifts from the open doors of the bell and cross, and snatches of radio sing from passing car windows. Walkers bustle down tracks, carrying cameras, maps and sandwiches, as buzzards circle overhead, hunting their own lunch in the long grass. The dual carriageway traffic hums tunes of progress, access, nostalgia for a time when all this was field. I thought I'd found silence here, on this hillside, but even the most tranquil spot is brimming with music, as the church bells chime, and the blackbirds trill, and the brook at Elsie Partington walk babbles, telling watery secrets to all who care to listen. Hello, my name's Leanne, and I'm a poet, a performer, and a community artist. I first visited the village of Clent in 2023 as part of a project called Live and Local Living Room, which supports artists and performers to work with community groups to make art. Clent is a beautiful village in rural Worcestershire, and it's just southwest of Birmingham. The village has a thriving community and the Clent Connect Community Hub is at its centre. Clent Connect Community Hub. Try saying that three times fast. Clent Connect has a village shop, a community cafe, and they run events and celebrations for special occasions too. In summer 2023, I spent some time at the cafe and in the hub, chatting to local people about Clent and running writing workshops about the area. It was a really lovely experience, and it inspired this podcast that you're listening to right now. Throughout the podcast, we're going to hear stories and poems from Clent, some written by local people, and others written by me, inspired by the stories that people have told me during my visits. We might even chuck in a ghost story or two. That first poem that you heard was inspired by lots of conversations about what Clent sounds like. And I think you'll agree it sounds pretty gorgeous. So let's get started with a few poems and stories from the workshops. 
you're about to hear pieces by Janet, Sue and Roland. All the pieces that you'll hear from um, members of the village and members of the community were all recorded on site at Clent. And the background noise really beautifully captures the vibrancy of the village. Pretty and an engaging age, consisting of energy, fun and play, under lovely sky. Walk to St Leonard's and smell the hedgerows as you go. Sit at Nimming's car park, where you will smell the bacon cooking and the smell of dogs muddy, fresh from their walk. Finally, walk home to the smell of freshly laundered clothes, sheets and home-cooked food. That is what Clent is for me. Ramblings of an unfit bystander. Bicycle's favourite route, speeding to who knows where, uphill to the four stones at the top, slowly descending, looking for a pint to quench the thirst. Yellow jersey beckons to the very fit. Thank you to Janet, Sue and Roland for reading their poems for us. The next piece is a poem that I've created using lines, sentences and images from the notes I made when having conversations with loads of people about Clent and what the village means to them. It was really lovely to get to have these conversations with people and to hear about all the stories and memories and reminiscences that people had about the village. Um, some people who had lived there for a very long time some people who were relatively new. Some people talked about the history of the village or their childhoods in Clent, while other people focused on the glorious nature in the area or the people in the village or the changes that have happened in the area over the years. All the stories I heard were fascinating and it was an absolute pleasure to speak to everyone about Clent. This poem was created using the cut-up poetry technique. Basically, what you do is you write each line on a separate piece of paper, cut them into pieces, and then rearrange them on the page. The resulting poem has a jumbled, intriguing feel, but I think it really sums up the feeling of hearing loads of stories about Clint and then trying to fit them all into one piece of writing. Roots run deep here. Old spark plugs and blue glass pulled from the dark earth. The lawn dies in the perfect footprint of buildings long since disappeared. Five hamlets, four standing stones, nine worthies and countless happy memories. Like Grass growing through the cracking tarmac. Jesus Christ superstar still ringing in our ears. Everybody knows everybody's business. Like wells sunk into stone. We spread our village across the hills like honey on crumpets. These hills have saved us from Birmingham. Come for two years and stay for good. And on a clear day, you can see the tower blocks from the very top. You can lose yourself in these woods, wild flowers weaved into the laces of sturdy walking boots. The goat on the triangle, her pupils flat as letterboxes. Here, the postcodes make no sense hung like bunting from an open cafe doorway, ripe tomatoes growing fresh from the dirt. Back when Lord Cobham drove a microlight, a bass baritone moved the school hall to tears, lines of swallows singing on the overhead wires. The war memorial bears our grandfather's names, running through us like a stick of rock. We'd never want to live 
anywhere else. Let's listen to three more poems and stories from the Live and Local workshops now. This time, they're from Brian, Kate and Pam. Red Poppies. In November 2022, I volunteered to collect for the British Legion's Poppy Appeal and was asked to cover Clent. Wow! How many houses does this village have? It took me about 13 hours to cover about 90%, even though many people were out. Some of the most challenging were properties on the edge of the Clent Hills. Clatterback Lane was a particular challenge. Taking the red box to so many houses, I met scores of new people, too many faces to remember, but it was a magical way to gain an overview of Clent. Surprise pulmonaria in the garden when we moved in, called Clent Blue Sky, full of expectation. The wandering stream that is blue in sunshine sky reflection. The happy whinnying of horses when they see the blue of their feed bag. Fields of Speedwell in Aston's Meadow. Feeling blue, restored by countryside walks. Blue Art Studio, mindfulness and reflection. Green. Green mould on north facing walls and drain pipes. Green grass standing tall. Leaves sparkling after heavy rain. A line of dark green plastic watering cans frothing dishwater from their spouts. Me carrying water up the hill, staggering, trying not to spill a drop. Dipping the watering cans into deep green rain barrels will help us to see dry summers out. Not the deepest green of all, but the favourite shady spot when weather is too hot Out come the garden chairs, and we stretch out in the weeping willow's shade. Thank you to Brian, Kate and Pam for reading their writing for us. Those three pieces of writing came from a prompt about picking a colour and then using that colour to describe the village. Now, this podcast is going to take a slightly spooky left turn. One of the most memorable stories I heard when visiting Clent was a tale from Austin, a Clent resident who experienced an exorcism of ghosts, a property in the village. Austin's story was really interesting to me. I think there's something fascinating about ghost stories and why we tell them. All cultures have ghost stories, but there are also many sceptics out there, unwilling to believe in something beyond the physical realm. I'm a bit of a sceptic, but Austin's story was really compelling, and I was particularly struck by the way he framed his experience. He found it comforting rather than scary, experiencing ghosts as evidence of life after death, and that thought really comforted him. So I wrote this sonnet about the Clent exorcism to process my own thoughts about spirits and history and the stories we tell to one another in order to seek comfort in this strange universe. Thank you to Austin and the ghosts of Clent Cottage for the inspiration. The past reverberates in ancient rooms, and shadows dance across the darkened walls. It's easy to find spirits in the gloom, or question whether ghosts exist at all. While some are sensitive to energy, and others scoff and claim they cannot feel, perception is a flimsy guarantee. It doesn't mean the story isn't real. The tales we tell can amplify our fears, or comfort us when hardships lie ahead. I dare say in a hundred thousand years, we'll still share stories honouring the dead. Connections are the things we value most. 
a memory can manifest a ghost. Okay, let's head back to that sunny hillside in rural Worcestershire now and listen to three more poems and stories from the Live and Local workshops. This time we have three poems by Laura, Hilary and Nina. Clent is not the sort of place where a queue is required although of course everyone would, should, a queue become necessary. Clent is not dark and it's rarely lonely. It is the centre of its own sandwich, a crispy, thick-cut bacon surrounded by fluff. Gentle living, evergreen and nice, total relaxation, live settled but entertained and enthused. Clent is not a race to the moon. Clent is not a supermodel nor a virtual reality. Clent does not judge you nor leave you in times of need. Clent is not a fast food restaurant nor a race on the wild side. But what Clent is, is a very happy place to be. Thank you to Laura, Hilary and Nina for reading those pieces. Now, we've almost come to the end of this sonic journey, listening to poems, writings and reflections from Clent in Worcestershire. But there's still time for one more piece from me. While I was having all these conversations and running the workshops at the Clent Connect Cafe during this project, I was so struck by the positive energy of the place. There seem to be fewer and fewer places in the modern world where people can come together and talk with their friends and with strangers. And there's something really beautiful about a hub as a community resource. So I wanted to write a poem talking about how it felt to come to Clank Connect as an outsider. And this is what I wrote. It's also an answer to the first question I had when I came on board for this project. What is Clank Connect? It's an old village hall. But that's not it at all. It's an art space, a cafe, a shop and a heart. It's a lifeline for some. And the people who come know community grows when we all play our part. It's a catch up with mates and the clatter of plates as a visitor orders a marmalade slice. And it's kindness and cake and the friends that we make and it's welcoming strangers without thinking twice. It's the walks on the hills and the sumptuous thrill of the fresh air that quiets and settles our soul. It's a bustling hub with cheap drinks and good grub and where anything broken can find its way whole. It's the artisan loaves and the cyclists in droves and it's bringing the dogs for a nice cup of tea. And it's more than four walls, it's a space for us all. It's a place to feel welcome and sheltered and free. See, it's cider and honey, but it's worth more than money to empower communities everyone shares. It's peace in the hubbub, a popular hug club, rejoicing as one in a culture of care. We come here together to make each day better, with laughter and chatter that raises the roof. Because this life is communal, and that fact is crucial. Our small village cafe providing the proof. Thank you to everyone involved in this project, everyone at Clent Connect, everyone who spoke to me or got involved in a workshop, and especially to everybody who read their poems or shared their work on this podcast. We hope that you will join us at Clent Connect soon. <laughs>